20 years ago on Christmas Eve, a group of scientists were waiting for their Christmas wish to come true, right here at the National Space Centre. Instead, they were left with a Christmas mystery. Whatever happened to Beagle 2? Not a lost dog, but a lost Mars lander. Our story begins in 1997, when the European Space Agency were planning a mission to Mars. The orbiter, known as Mars Express, would represent the first fully European mission to any planet. A group of British scientists, headed by Colin Pillinger of the Open University, thought the mission was missing something very important, a lander, which would be able to answer the age-old question, is there life on Mars? ESA and the UK government were convinced, and Beagle 2, named after the ship that took Charles Darwin on his voyage to South America, was set to go to Mars. So the government was on board, but what about the general public? To get them interested, Colin Pillinger turned to some UK artists. This is Martian music, and it was the signal that Beagle 2 would have sent back to Earth, composed by the band Blur. And this is a Martian eye test, or instrument calibration chart, which will help scientists get accurate readings from Mars. To incite more public interest, the Landing Operations Control Centre found a very special home, right here at the National Space Centre. It's now where we perform our live talks, but originally, members of the public could come here and see scientists and engineers working on a real life space mission, the first of its kind in Europe, all through this window right here. Beagle 2 launched with Mars Express on the 2nd of June 2003. With the orbits of Earth and Mars being closer than they had been in about 60,000 years, the journey to Mars took just five months compared to the usual nine to 12 months. Upon landing, Beagle 2 would open up, unfurl its solar panels and reveal the communications array. From there, it could deploy the Payload Adjustable Workbench, or PAW, which had a range of scientific instruments, including cameras, spectrometers, and an optical microscope. Before Beagle 2 could land, however, it had to go through the seven minutes of terror. It takes seven minutes for entry, descent, and landing. These seven minutes would make or break the mission. Six days before its landing, Beagle 2 was released from the Mars Express orbiter. It entered the Martian atmosphere at about 12,000 miles per hour, with a heat shield in place to protect it from the extreme temperatures and friction. A parachute was deployed to slow it down, and large airbags were deployed to protect it during the landing. With today's technical advancements, we're able to see missions go through these seven minutes of terror, like with the Perseverance rover in 2021. Scientists and people everywhere can watch the landing as it happens. But at 3 a.m. on Christmas Day 2003, scientists such as mission manager Mark Sims from the University of Leicester had no such luxury. Beagle 2 would have landed early in the morning on Christmas Day. We all had a very different Christmas. Lots of us had our Christmases early so we could be here for the landing. We were so busy that, to be frank, we didn't really sit there thinking, chewing our nails or thinking, is Beagle 2 going to land? Because we were gearing up to be able to do operations on the surface of Mars. It was disappointed we didn't get a signal but that didn't sink in for a few hours because we weren't totally convinced we'd get a signal at the first attempt. However, as time went on, it became clear that we weren't going to get a signal from Beagle 2. And then it started to sink in. Of course, the, the natural thing then is the blame game. Who's at fault? There are both ESA inquiries and a public accounts committee inquiry. And we decided we'd do our own. The Beagle 2 team sat down and wrote a comprehensive analysis of what could have gone wrong because we wanted people to learn the lessons and not repeat our mistakes. A signal was supposed to be sent to Mars Express just after landing, but no such signal came. And everyone was left wondering, what happened to Beagle 2? Perhaps it skimmed off the Martian atmosphere and back into deep space. Maybe it exploded due to the rigours of re-entry. Or perhaps simply, it crashed into the surface. For a very long time, there was no answer to any of these questions. Then, one day, over a decade later, something was spotted on Mars. The high-resolution camera on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter helped reveal what really happened to the lander. 
There, on the surface of Mars, was a shining reflection. Scientists from ESA's Mars Express team, the Beagle 2 team and NASA's JPL worked to identify the object. And finally we had an answer to what had happened to Beagle 2. The images showed that Beagle 2 had actually landed on Mars. It was no longer lost. So why did it not reach out to us? From the images we can see that only two or three solar panels actually deployed, which blocked any signals being transmitted. This means even if Beagle 2 did collect any scientific data, it couldn't transmit them back to Earth. For many years, the Beagle 2 mission was known primarily as a failure. But these images show that it succeeded in its mission of landing on the Martian surface. It entered into the seven minutes of terror and came out the other side, becoming Europe's first mission to successfully land on another body in the solar system and making the UK the third ever country to land on another planet. We're still not sure why Beagle couldn't unfurl all of its solar panels, but there is peace in knowing that it landed safely. Unfortunately, Colin Pillinger, as well as two others in the Beagle 2 team, George Fraser and Dave Barnes, passed away before they could find out the fate of their lander. So what is next for Beagle 2? Can any rovers go and check on it? Although NASA's Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter are in the same crater, they are not close enough to visit. Plus, they have their own mission to get on with. So maybe it'll be down to the humans that will one day set foot on Mars to be the first signs of life that Beagle 2 will encounter. Maybe it'll be you that travels across the solar system to finally check on Beagle 2 and maybe unfurl those solar panels. It was an ambitious mission, but it inspired generations of British scientists and engineers. After all, Beagle 2 is for life, not just for Christmas.